macros. Drilling data independent macros. The save macro dialog has a checkbox which allows drilling independent macros to be created. This becomes live when the display option, no dialogues, is selected. It works in a similar way as other macros and is reliant on the identical naming of the drilling data folders used in the source database and the folders created for use in the target database. If the names of the drilling data folders are different, then a warning message is shown. Drilling macros are not surface independent, but read the surfaces from the inputs to the drilling data. Warnings are provided if the macro will not work. Macros that work over multiple parts require planning, and drilling macros, considered as an advanced feature, possibly need more careful planning. Select the triangulated surfaces and detect the holes. The defaults for this example are suitable. Click OK. Now create the drilling data folders for your chosen axis. Here we can see the list of detected holes. These drilling data folders should now be renamed. It is this name that the macro will recognize and use when it is run in the target database. Drilling data 1 is a 6.5 diameter hole. I am going to simplify the name here to just drill 6.5. This is the group of six tapped holes. Simplify this name. Simplify and rename the remainder. drill the tops of all the holes. That will include the top of the M10 holes and the tops of the counterboard holes. Spot drilling, we get a warning message, we understand this and continue. I'm going to adjust the depth here for the spot drilling so it only drills two millimeters deep. Process is finished. Let's link the passes. A brief animation of the tool path. Let's now drill the 6.5 hole. If we start from part 2, this will automatically change the size of our drill to 6.5. In order to ensure I go all the way through the plate, I need to check the depth adjustment. Happy that my settings are now correct, we click OK. Link the passes, brief check the animation, I'm going to accelerate through the remaining cycles.
that's all the cycles complete. Let's save this database. The cycles are created in the normal way, but note, if you manually alter the depth of a hole, then the edited value will be written to the macro. This may have a major impact when the macro is run on the new part. Where possible, drilling to depth and the depth adjustment for through holes, blind tapped holes or reamed holes may be a better choice. The macro can be created for any stage in the production, from the basic passes or linked toolpath through to a finished tape file or toolsheet. In this example, I am using the linked toolpaths. This will give me flexibility to create any additional cycles that I may need to include in the final tape file. The linked drilling cycle folders now need to be selected From the File drop down menu, choose Macro, Save As. From the Display options, choose No Dialogues. Check the drilling option. As the new part will have already been opened, in order to rename the drilling data folders, there is no need to prompt for project settings. Save the Macro. Start a new session of NCGCAM and open the part file which is going to be our target. Delete any unwanted folders. Select the triangulated surfaces and detect the holes. Because we have some counter bores that are connected, check the option to allow the detection of part holes. Now create drilling data folders for your chosen axis. Expand the drilling data folder and identify those we need to rename. Remember, these names must match those in the source database that was used to create the macro. It is probably a good idea to keep a record of what the macro does. I saved a screenshot of the folder for reference. There are three additional sets of holes that have been generated. These will not be machined by the macro. From the file menu, choose Macro, Run. Browse and choose the required drilling macro. Any holes that were included in the macro will have had the appropriate cycles created for them. Any new holes or holes of a different size would have been omitted. In this case, the three additional sets. These should now be interrogated, renamed if necessary, and machined so that if required, they can be included for processing in the tape file.